on a housing st estate nearby, a tower block is due to be removed and this tower block housed at mobile phone masts for E3 and Vodafone. So this obviously presents the mobile operator with a bit of a problem, i.e. what do they do without the building? And the most common solution, at least in the short term, is to rig temporary masts. And that's exactly what happened here. So this is what one of the nearby fields now looks like. So you can see there are two temporary masts there. The one on the left is for Vodafone and the one on the right is for EE3. Now as you see there are two different designs here. Vodafone's got a very conventional sort of lattice tower, whereas EE and 3 are using a guide telescopic mast. So in today's video I'm going to just explain a little bit about sort of what's there and sort of how these work. So starting off with the Vodafone mast, now this is actually quite a common design seemingly for Vodafone No2 temporary mast to have sort of a very conventional looking lattice tower which is uh, supported at the base. Now while talking at the bottom of the mast there is a black sort of container which contains the generator for this mast because these are sort of like in this case fit in the middle of the field the cost and time required to dig in a main supply is simply not worthwhile and certainly with the lead times involved it would just take far too long so a generator is required and these are self-contained units they have a fuel source and everything within a very ruggedized enclosure because obviously fuel theft and generator theft are not uncommon and at the bottom you can see there's a bit of a power cable which then leads into a green container which is the broadcast equipment bunker so that then contains all the radio transmitters and probably the base amplifiers and all the equipment required to actually run a mast site and outside of that comes a load of feeders now this has feeders for G09 and G18 so this and also U21 as well as PacNet and pager so this mask carries 2g on the 900 band the 1800 band and 3g on the 2100 band as well as vodafone's packnet m2m service and a pager antenna so if we go up the mask now we can see the antennas now on the lower level are the 900 and 1800 panels so these are just con the conventional design so the, sl the sort of slot at the bottom of the panel Conventionally used for 900 megahertz operation, but you can actually stuff 1800 in them as well because 1800 is twice the frequency and therefore half the wavelength, so it fits quite well onto a 900 megahertz antenna. Then, as we go above, there are the 2100 megahertz antennas, which are for the 3G. This site only carries 3G on the 2100 megahertz band, and in fact, actually, this site is broadcasting very legacy 3G at 7.2 megahertz. 7.2 megabits HSDPA and in fact it actually looks rather a lot as though they've taken the all the old equipment off the roof of the block of flats and just transplanted it onto the field there rather than fitting new equipment but anyway as we then look at the top of the mask we can see there are two microwave links now once again like with the power it's not really cost or time effective to lay fibers underground so microwave is very very common on temporary mast sites and then at the very top of the mast is the PacNet and Pager antennas which look like collinear and closed dipoles, which is not uncommon. So that's what the Vodafone mast looks like, very much like a conventional mast really. So then if we move up to the right of the sort of original mast, there is the e in 3 one. Now as I said, this is a guide telescopic mast, so this one can, rises up sort of from the middle and has tubes that fit inside each other to then enlarge very much like the telescoping antenna on many uh, FM and DAB radio sets. Now see with this being a fairly small pole certainly at the top it needs guy wires to stabilise it unlike the lattice tower that Vodafone use. And like the Vodafone mask this is similar on the ground. So there is a one of the very similar looking black generator containers, very similar power requirements. Actually, these enclosed generators are actually quite common for installations like this. 
And then to the side of those, instead of having an equipment bunk, they have the sort of bare cabinets that you see on a roadside mast. Now this mast has new dual band cathrine panels, new mast amplifiers and actually new cabinets on the ground as well. Unlike Vodafone which you can clearly see we're using quite old panels on the mast. So these are dual band cathrine panels and based on the mast amplifiers, this is a radio design 1800 and 2100 and I think a comscope 1800 as well. This mast is going to be carrying 1800 MHz 2G, 4G for EE and likely 2100 MHz for three as well. So in terms of the cabinets, there's a Fredo there, an Alifabs power cabinet and it will likely gain a BTS 3900A as well at a later date. Now this EE slash 3 temporary site, you will notice doesn't have any micro links on it and you're probably wondering why this is. And that's just because they haven't been fitted yet. This mast was being built pretty much as I passed through and obviously setting up the microwave links requires someone at this site and also the site that is going to be feeding it. So organising that will probably take a bit of time. So these two are both, I guess, reasonably sort of standard in terms of their frequency and mode of operation. However, there are temporary masks that have to cover very, very high load areas as well. So this is an example in fairly central Manchester. And we can see that the Vodafone O2 tower here looks very similar to the one in my previous earlier on in this video. Except this one has got two panels per side and they're all and they're multi multi band panels. So this mast doesn't just carry the sort of 800 4G, 900 2G, 3G, 2100 3G that you see on very many Vodafone O2 masts. This one carries 1800 MHz services, which I think is 4G in this case, and also 2600 4G for Vodafone as well, to cope with the high, the nature of the high load location that it is in. Now, in terms of temporary masks, they aren't just used in situations where buildings are being knocked down, they're also used to provide capacity for events that bring a lot of people so for example music events so for example a good one that's happening soon is Glastonbury now EE is some sort of sponsor of the event and in a recent press release they kind of outlined the setup they're going to be using there which is six six sets of masts carrying quite a lot of frequencies actually so they've got the usual 1800 2G, 2100 3G and then also 1800 4G as you'd expect but they've also got 2600 MHz 4G as well. However, instead of just using one 2600 MHz, 20 MHz band wide carrier, they're also using a second, so there'll be 35 MHz of 2600 MHz 4G on each sector of each mast. So obviously six masts of six sectors, you're looking at 36 sectors here, each carrying the 20 MHz of 1800 4G and also 35 MHz of 2600 4G. That's a lot of 4G spectrum. And of course there's the usual layers of 1800 and 2100, of which E has quite a lot of spectrum as well. However, I'll probably talk about the Glastonbury mask more in a dedicated video about these latest sort of developments in high capacity approaches that I've spotted around the place. So I hope you've enjoyed this little look at temporary phone masks and can't stand that they are quite important, although not actually necessarily the most liked by the public for obvious reasons, and that realistically they are just very similar to normal masks. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out the cellular equipment playlist that I have on YouTube and also my website which is pedroc.co.uk, both linked below.